In this step of the tutorial, we are going to see how to create a form to edit customers. Go ahead and create a new class, customer form. This is going to be a body component, so we need to extend, for example, a vertical layout. But the problem with that one is that the captions are going to be on top of the fields, and we would like them to be on the left instead. So let's use form layout, which is uh, designed to align the captions on the left of the, of, uh, of the fields, yes. And for each Java field here, we need to create an input component in the form. So for example, I'm going to use text field for the first name. And remember to use the same identifiers you are using in the customer uh, class. That's important when doing the data binding part. And let's duplicate this line a couple of times for last name and email also. And let's configure the captions. For the customer status enumeration, I'm going to use a native select which is an alternative to the more advanced combo box component, but we are not using any advanced features this time. So this is just fine. And for the birth date, I'm going to use a pop-up date field. Let's use birthday as the caption for this component. So the purpose of this form is to um, save and delete customers. So we will need a couple of buttons for that. Save and delete and the captions, of course. All right. Mm. Because we are saving and deleting customers, then we need uh, a reference to the uh, uh, customer service, right? So now we have the instance. And we also need to keep track of which customer we are editing. So let's create a, a reference to the customer. And finally, we need to uh, update the UI. So I will create this reference here. Uh, in a real application, you would introduce some interface or, or do some refactor in order to avoid coupling the, this uh, form to the specific UI. But for the purposes of this tutorial, that's just fine. All right, now let's create a constructor. And uh, first of all, I need to create this parameter here. And let's assign it to the field, yes. And let's configure the layout now. So I would like this uh, customer form to use the minimum amount of space needed to, to show all these fields. So you can do that by calling the set size and defined method. And uh, well, now we can add the components. So let's add first name, last name, email, status, birth date, save. Well, you know what? For the save and delete buttons, we can create a new horizontal layout with the save and the and the delete button. Let's call this buttons. And let's configure some space between uh, these two. And now we can add the buttons layout here. All right. So now we can add this form into the UI to, to see how it looks like. So I'm going to create a new uh, customer form here. Let's pass 
this UI to the form and I want to place the form just next to the uh, grid so I need also a horizontal layout here let's add it right here new horizontal layout with the grid and then the form let's call this main and again let's set um, spacing true and I would like this uh, main layout, this horizontal layout, to use as much space as possible. So you can do it by calling the set sizeful method and the same for the grid actually. So set sizeful. And what else? Um, well, I would like this grid to kind of uh, expand as much as possible. So you can do that by telling the main layout to set the expand ratio for the grid to, let's say, 1. I'm going to explain this in a further video, this set expand ratio method. And instead of adding the grid, we need to add the main layout here. Now we can try the application. The form is there. Let's quickly review what happened. So, as you can see, the caption for the fields are on the left. That's because we use the form layout. And we have this component here, which allows you to select a certain date. And there is a, a select um, component here, the native select component but this has no options in it. So let's add the options first of all. And you can do that. Well, you need to go to the customer form and uh, let's do it right here. So what you need to do is to add items to it. So there is, there is this uh, method add items and you can pass a collection and because we are using this customer uh, status enumeration, we can use the values method. And that should be enough to show the, the options in the, in the select. Yes, now we have the options, that's enough. And let's improve the UX before we continue a little bit. This form is going to be used mostly for saving uh, customers. So it makes sense to add some kind of keyboard uh, shortcut and maybe also changing the color of this button. That's very easy to do. All we need to do well is save the set style name value theme and these are the styles that you can use for the button and I'm going to use this one primary and the shortcut, you can set a, uh, a click shortcut and you need to specify a key code. You can use this uh, interface to get the codes. So let's use enter and no modifiers such as alt or control keys or shift. We are not going to use that. And uh, yeah, that should be it. So let's see um, how it looks like now. So yes, the button is different now. And if, if you are, for example, editing something here and then you hit enter, it's like clicking this button. All right, but let's uh, finish the implementation of this form. We need a method to set the customer that is going to be shown here, right? let's create the customer method set customer method and we assigned the 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 customer to this uh, field here we need to do some kind of uh, like populating we need, we need to populate this these fields right so you could you could uh, think that okay well I can do something like this for example like uh, first name that set value and then customer that get 
first name, right? And then you, you'll do it for the other fields like that, similarly. But there is an easier way with batting. So you have the bn field group class, which has some uh, static methods here. So we are going to use the uh, bind fields and buffered. We are not interesting in interested in buffer at this point. And you need to specify a bin, so that's like the customer, like the entity class, or but it's the instance, the actual, the actual instance, which is customer. This one, and then you need to specify an instance of a, or an object that also contains uh, uh, member fields uh, with kind of the same uh, name as the uh, entity which is, of course, this one, this layout. So you can just pass the, this reference. And with that, we sh what we have here is that this kind of set value that I was, I was doing before, and also the other way around. If the value changes uh, for any of those um, fields here, then the customer, this one, the same reference as, as this one, uh, is going to be updated. So that's really cool. And uh, but let's let's continue with implementation of this set customer. So if we are setting a new customer, we need to change the UI somehow. So I would like these buttons to be visible according to uh, to the state of the application. So for example, the lead button should be visible only if the customer is persisted. So fortunately and conveniently in this case, uh, the, the backend has this method. And once we have uh, set an, a new customer, we should uh, make sure that this form is visible because we are going to make it invisible in uh, when, when we click the save or the delete button later. So at this point, we need to make sure it is visible. And also it would be nice if, for example, let's say I'm just uh, setting a new customer here, right? So as, as soon as I set a new customer, it would be great if this gets selected, just like what happened, but automatically. So I can start um, typing something here. So there's a method for that, which is, uh, in this case, is, is the first name, first name dot select all. It's going to select all the text inside the text field. So I can start using the form right away with the keyboard. And that's it for the set customer method. Um, we also need uh, to react to clicks on the save and the delete um, buttons, right? So what I'm going to do here is I'm, I'm going to create a couple of methods for that. They're going to be private and let's call this um, save. So we are going to call this method when, when, the click, when, the, when the save button is clicked and let's use uh, delete for the other one. And this is the idea. So we have the uh, save button. We can add a click listener and we can just call the save method. And the same for the delete button. So call the delete button. All right. So if, if save is clicked, we are going to get to this point where what we want to do is to first save the current customer, right? And then we need to change the UI somehow. So mm, we need to tell the UI that the list of customers has changed somehow. Maybe it's a, a new customer or maybe we just edited some customers. So the, the, this uh, grid needs to be uh, updated. And that's the reason we needed this reference here. And also, because we are playing with the set visible method here, 
for the form. We, now we, we need to make sure that, well, I'm done with, with this form once I clicked the save method. So we can uh, hide the form. So set visible false is going to hide the form. And well, for the delete action, it's exactly the same, but we we need just to call the delete method on the service on the service. Uh, and I think that's it. So this form is uh, implemented. We are going to connect this to the UI in the next video.